Hi, my name is Jay Sugarman, and I want to welcome you to Museum Open House. This ongoing series features and highlights many of the outstanding museums and other cultural institutions. The main purpose of most programs is to inform viewers about current and upcoming exhibits, various programs, resources, and other opportunities that are available for the general public. Today, we're fortunate to have as our guest Lisa Crossman. Lisa serves as the curator at the Fitchburg Art Museum, and she also curated the current fascinating exhibition entitled The Sacred in the Profane, which is on display at the Museum of Russian Icons, located in Clinton, now through June 30th. This exhibition features the unique work of well-known Russian sculptor Konstantin Samoon. During the program, we're finding out why and how the sacred and the profane came about. We'll go on a behind-the-scenes tour and, in the process, come to better understand and appreciate Mr. Samoon's background, his work as a sculptor, and the wonderful opportunity those of you watching have to visit the exhibition. Let's start by meeting Lisa and then finding out all about the sacred and the profane. Welcome, Lisa. Delighted to see you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Jay. Oh, I had a fabulous visit, uh, eye-opening. Uh, I'm a, glad to a, hear that. A couple of weeks ago, so eager to hear more and definitely have you inform viewers. But before we jump to that, I think it would be of interest just to hear a little bit about your background sure. and current position at the Fitchburg Art Museum. Yes, yeah, so my background is actually in modern and contemporary Latin American art. It's what I did my doctoral work in. Um, and I taught some, mm -hmm. held some other positions, and I've been at the Fitchburg Art Museum now almost three years. Um, and it's been really wonderful to be a curator at the Fitchburg Art Museum, working um, mainly with contemporary artists based in New England, um, as well as um, with work in our collection, photography and American art mainly. And then how did the collaboration, before we even get to the yeah. exhibition, how did the collaboration with the Museum of Russian Icons have come about? Yes, well, interestingly, Kent Russell worked at the Fitchburg Art Museum years ago. He is now the director of the Museum of Russian Icons. And so I, I met Kent on a visit to the Museum of Russian Icons, my first visit, and um, the two of us with Nick um, Capasso, the director mm. of the Fitchburg Art Museum, began to hatch a, a plan to build a collaboration. And I will leave the the, the planning of the collaboration really to the directors. Um, they, they really ironed out a wonderful plan to um, create a series of exhibitions over the next three years oh. um, that will bring contemporary art um, to the special exhibition gallery at the Museum of Russian Icons. And so each of these exhibitions um, will include work that will be either about Russia or by Russian artists, um, at times specifically touching on Mm, certain aspects of the icon tradition. And so we began the series with the work of, of Constantine, um, which I think is a really excellent fit for the museum. Yeah, no, that's icons. wonderful to hear that this isn't just a one shot yep. exhibition, that the collaboration will be going on, because when we get into it and people will see it soon, it's not something you would at first think fits, but then the more you think about it and learn about uh, Constantine and yeah. his work, it's a wonderful fit and to make it uh, contemporary is a nice change for sure, yeah. addition. I mean, I think it's, it's been wonderful, it's really important to think about uh, the contemporary context in relation to history, I think, right? And um, I've loved the opportunities as a curator when you can really sort of draw those connections for viewers. It's such an amazing learning opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, to give a little context to what we're gonna see, sure. Would you provide a little background to uh, Constantine? Yes, of uh, course. And then we'll move on. Yeah, so Constantine was born in, in Russia, in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, in the 1930s. Um, he studied art um, in the 1950s. Um, so, you know, in the 1950s, there was a slightly loosening up of, of mm -hmm. communism post Stalin, right? Um, and so before that you had, you know, a real emphasis on, on socialist realism. Um, and then it sort of shifts slightly. So there's a little bit more exposure to modernism. And I'm saying this because I think this is important to think about when you're thinking about Constantine's work, that he was in this environment. Mm. Um, but in Russia, there also wasn't a lot of consumer goods. 
Um, so this is sort of, these are all things that were sort of part of, part of his initiation as an artist, I suppose, but he was academically trained um, as a sculptor and we can see Constantine Simoun here. Um, and he moved to the U.S. in the 1980s and 1988, um, really for personal reasons, um, and became enthralled with plastic and just the amount of yes. plastic and mass-produced consumable goods that you find in the United States. And he just started collecting these pieces and started to see um, imagery that we sometimes we can recognize as Christian iconography mm -hmm. in these pieces and to think about maybe the the meanings that we attach to consumable goods and also just the vessel as an object you know yeah. which this is yeah. a contemporary con in a contemporary context that will explore the plastic vessel but you can think back to ancient times there were have been vessels with um, with faces and um, and various anthropomorphic representations for for a long time. Just to again provide a little more background sure. to him before we jump to the current exhibition, yep. we just want to highlight a couple of his works before. This one got a lot of well-known recognition, The Broken Ring. Just a quick word, please, about this one. Sure. Um, the Broken Ring is one of, as you mentioned, Jay, it's one of Constantine's most well-known works. So it's a monument to the siege um, um, that happened in Leningrad yeah. and, um, the, during World War II. So the monument is located um, on Lake Ladoga and it's um, basically two arches and as you can see in the image, there's a break between the two of them. So it's really referencing um, sort of the, um, the ice path that was built across the lake to bring, um, to bring materials in mm -hmm. and also to evacuate people. Yeah. And so it's um, a really profound statement, and it's also a very interesting monument in that it is um, it is abstract, right? So it, it's an abstract symbol that's used to sort of um, talk about and memorialize yeah. the siege. Um, and so it's very powerful, um, and it definitely um, is his most well-known work, and I think is important just to, to keep in mind as we move forward, um, as he shifts gears, towards plastic, but I think yeah. that the sort of monumentality that you see here um, can be reinterpreted or you can be used as a frame to think about other pieces yeah. that, that he produces. And he was recognized with the highly esteemed uh, Lenin Prize yes. for this piece of work. Well, making the transition, sure. you have a wonderful yes. picture or two there of something that was at the De Cordova Museum for a decade or so. Yeah, exactly. So what you see here in this um, book of Constantine's work um, is an image of a totem. It's um, uh, America totem, I believe it's called, Totem America. And it was in the 1990s that it was created um, at the De Cordova Museum, as you stated, and um, remained outside as part of the sculpture park for about a decade. And mm -hmm. as you can see here, it's really um, an accumulation yeah of found plastic. Um, and I think that you can read a lot into this artwork um, because of its title and because it is a tower of plastic um, in terms of um, maybe what we value in the US. Mm -hmm. You could, he tends to not talk about his work as a, with, um, to write particular social meanings mm -hmm. onto it, but I think that it definitely is wide open to, to various interpretations. Most definitely, yes. most definitely. Well, moving on to the sacred and the profane, a little bit more on how it came together sure. and the mission and purpose that you had in mind. Absolutely, um, so I will, um, I learned, I will say first that I learned about Constantine's work um, through Nick Capasso and his work with Constantine um, at the De Cordova Museum. And um, Nick and Kent and I all agreed that it was a great place, a great first exhibition to have yeah. um, at the Museum of Russian Icons um, for, for a variety of reasons. And one of them, um, just a, which will include some backstory about the Museum of Russian Icons too, yes. is the fact that Gordon Langton, the founder of the Museum of Russian Icons, actually um, worked in plastic. Um, so he uh, worked with Nipro um, as the CEO of Nipro, and he became incredibly fascinated with Russian icons oh, on, on a business trip in the 1980s. 
um, which is a very interesting parallel story to what happened with Constantine, right. Um, right. who you know had been working in Russia, came to the U.S. Yeah. in the 1980s, and then became fascinated with plastic. Right. And both of them kind of became connoisseurs and collectors, one of Russian icons, the other of plastics. And so I think that story is, is really fascinating mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to be able to bring it together. And in Constantine's work, I think that you can see um, how some of the, the back, the icon, the icon tradition is sort of part of his vocabulary, right? So you can see um, certain elements like gilding, um, to sort of signal that it's, um, that it's something ethereal, right? Um, he definitely is not making icons per se, right. but he is referencing certain aspects of them, such as maybe the flat surface, um, the n use of non-illusionistic space, mm -hmm. um, some references like to the Madonna, so to Christian yeah. iconography, yeah. right? But doing this really through um, found materials, so the plastic bottle is the main feature, and then sometimes um, well, he uses a variety of materials that I show in the show, right, um, right. that are represented in the show. But the the bottle sort of is the is the main subject, I would say. Mm -hmm. Before we step right in, this is a wonderful overview yeah. of the exhibition. For those who haven't had the chance to visit yet, could you just give us a quick sense of your thinking and organizing it this way? Yeah. So I. While putting the show together, I thought a lot about its placement in the Museum of Russian Icons. Um, I think this is a is work that is is different um, for the the standard viewer at the Museum of Russian Icons. Um, so I really wanted to think about sort of how to bridge that that those two different worlds of the icons that are represented in contemporary art. Mm -hmm. um, and one way that I thought about doing this and. Um, was to really uh, make sure that I showed a variety of materials um, because Constantine worked with a lot of found plastic, um, but he also worked in more traditional materials um, such as bronze. Um, he's worked with wood. Um, he's worked with silver. So there are these mm. beautiful pieces of yeah. jewelry um, that are included in the exhibition. Um, he's worked with ceramics. Um, so I think that all of these more traditional sort of um, materials help to sort of show um, his method of working, um, his talent mm -hmm. as a sculpture, yeah. as a sculptor, um, but also sort of elevate maybe the, the plastic and allow people to sort of understand what he was trying to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I hope to achieve that and I really didn't want to have too many pieces. I think that um, instead of giving a lot of material for people to look at, I wanted to minimize it so that people could really sort of sit with each piece for a yeah. while because I think that if you walk quickly past you, you might miss what Constantine is truly after. And I think that with fewer works, you can really reflect um, and, and start to notice the nuances of what he's doing sometimes with something as simple as is flipping the orientation and, and adding, um, juxtaposing different pieces together. Yeah, no, I really appreciated that aspect of the exhibition, both how it's spaced out, uh, somewhat limited, so I didn't feel overwhelmed. I was almost relieved when I started out, because as you say, it allows you to uh, just enjoy each piece and not feel like you have to keep going through and do a quick take on so many more. And it also really sets itself apart from the rest of the Museum of Russian Icons, which it's actually quite yeah, dense. That's right. Um, and there's a lot of material to look at, so I just wanted it to be very clear that you were walking into a space um, that was of contemporary art that was very that's separate, you know. Um, yeah. Well, let's jump in. Um, we have a couple of shots of this uh, first one, sure. the scream. Yep. A little bit of uh, background and materials and what we're seeing. Absolutely. Um, so you see a, a bronze piece up on the screen, Jay. And it's scream, but in parentheses, it's self-portrait mm. um, from the 1990s. And it is um, an earlier piece. So the work represented in the show spans from the mid-1980s um, through the 2000s. Um, so it captures like a spectrum of his work, mm -hmm. 80s to 2000s. And um, in this piece, um, 
I wanted it to be an opener, one, because there's a reference to it being a self-portrait, um, which I think is, is a nice starter to mm -hmm. the exhibition. Um, you can also see the reference to plastic in this piece as well, um, to the general form and that merging, that sort of association that Constantine makes between sort of the, the f human form and form of plastic. Um, and it's also, it's very evocative. Um, it's made in a traditional material, which again, I thought that was like a nice access point. Um, and I think it's really open to interpretation. Um, so I can read in various things into this piece. Um, Constantine, as I said, tends to sort of like let viewers um, interpret as they will. Um, but I think that this one uh, is great. And it also has that, um, as you can see when you sort of look inside, it has this kind of like glow and this kind of mm -hmm. illumination that comes out of it, which I think is pretty spectacular. Really wonderful way to begin. And moving on, we have a couple of shots of this. What are we seeing here, please? Yep, so this is um, Portrait of a Man. Um, and this is a ceramic piece that Constantine created. And so again, he worked across various materials. And even though this is in ceramic, you can still see that it's referencing a bottle. Right? It's just oriented in a different direction. Um, and I really love the conversation that happens between um, his use of material um, so that when you see plastic, you are perhaps so used to seeing plastic that maybe you miss um, some of the associations that he's making. Right. right. Whereas if you see it in a different material, then perhaps you see less of the plastic and you can see more of the human form. And I think with the ceramic in particular, um, that makes a really sort of beautiful connection back to ancient um, types of vessels that were created, right? Mm -hmm. um, often in yeah. ceramics, right? That um, that reference the the human form, be it the face or the body. Yeah, and I, know, I was struck too with the background that you provided about Constantine in uh, the Soviet Union and the lack of consumable goods, right. and then his sort of take and reaction to being placed in uh, this setting. Yeah, I think he was really um, overwhelmed, yeah. but also found plastic to be beautiful in a way. Um, and so he often will say, trash or treasure? Right. <laughs> you know, what, what is it? And, um, and is definitely working within a, a long tradition of, of modern and contemporary art practice in which artists are sort of taking materials um, of everyday use and, and pulling them into art making um, to allow us to sort of explore various um, meanings mm -hmm. behind them, some of them embedded in maybe how they function in society, and then also maybe making different connections um, that, that span the current context mm -hmm. as well, which I think happens with his work. And this next one gets at another point you mentioned that some of them have religious connotation, yes. this one being the Madonna. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, I think, um, I don't know, Jay, would you recognize this as a Madonna if, if it didn't have the title? <sighs> Maybe knowing the context of where it's being placed, yeah. I could definitely see that. Because once you have that hint, it's quite noticeable, I think. I think so too, and I think that's something that's, that's beautiful. Like the more that you, you sit with the piece, right, the more that you start to, to see these associ associations. So this is Madonna, and you can see sort of the, the gold that is around um, the, the two kind of heads, mm -hmm. which are actually the plastic bottles yeah. that are clear plastic, right? So they have a slight glow to them. Um, and then um, as you look at it, you can see that the, the form around it becomes this kind of halo. Right, um, mm -hmm. you could associate the the two different heads as Madonnas, as Madonna and Child. You can yeah. there, it sort of opens it up to to iconography that um, that is very familiar and is sort of um, for for many people of of um, who are f Christian. It's very familiar imagery, right? Most and, definitely. Um, so I think that it's. A uh, subtle play to a degree, but once you start seeing it, it's it's very pronounced and evident. No, I think if you had one of the icons there from the museum, uh, it would be striking. Yeah, I think it is, and I think it's also um, worth mentioning again that um, Constantine is not 
trying to replicate an icon, right? right. He's not trying to um, create something that is a religious object, that he is a sculptor, that he works in contemporary art, and that he's, he's playing with different um, forms that we venerate and exploring sort of how that can play out and, and what that means mm -hmm. um, socially and in, and in religion, I think, as well, in an abstract way. Mm -hmm. Well, this next one doesn't have the, quite the same context. Sure. I think once you're given the title, in this case, Pharaoh, you can definitely see the connection. Yeah, so this is, um, this is a great detail. And um, I also like that you include this piece because um, Sometimes he's working with a smaller kind of jug, right? And sometimes he's working with mm. much larger pieces of plastic that he's found. Um, so this is um, one large blue um, form made out of molded plastic. Um, and uh, you can sort of, you've zeroed in on, on the face, which is very animated, mm -hmm. and maybe you can connect that back out to, to scream. Mm -hmm. um, but again, mm. sort of giving sort of um, this totem-like form sort of a, a sacred meaning and you know to go back to the title I think that he is he is elevating these objects right in a way and giving them sort of more symbolic content um, and which is something that we very easily could miss and we do miss when they're sort of in mass quantities mm -hmm. throughout our Most life definitely. Most um, definitely. but forms that are mass produced and forms that we create just everyday objects those shapes come from somewhere, right? And I think that Constantine is very much thinking about sort of these ingrained ideas, like we are, we have um, these archetypes, these basic forms that are in the background of our, of our thinking and our knowledge and that when we create things, even if we're making just profane functional objects, that they often are in the shape of ourselves and our history, right? And, and so I think that really comes through in his work while he might not have uh, as a ultimate goal the social commentary mm -hmm. to raise our consciousness to the everyday is definitely accomplished. Absolutely. And a couple of images of this uh, Totem American yeah. too. So we have this other version of Totem America, yeah. right? We have Totem America too, which is, is smaller. And um, I think this piece is interesting because in some ways, um, there's a play between this one and other ones that you see in the show. Um, but I think that this one does ask the question of, of social content and, and what, what do we value um, as Americans and how does plastic fit into this? Mm -hmm. And so I think that these are the types of questions that one could certainly ask. And I think that Constantine um, does this in kind of a, a playful way. Um, and in particular, when he talks about it, I think that he's, um, not, he's leaving it up for us to sort of look at it and, and think and, and mm -hmm. decide. Yeah, no, that's appreciated. Um, this one has some wonderful images, one that people might remember from the initial shot yep. and the background and then a nice close up. Yeah, so um, this piece on the beach um, comes in two parts. Um, so, and I will say that this is Constantine was very wonderful to work with, and he insisted on one thing as soon as we started. And the one thing that he, he really wanted um, was to have this blown up image um, of on the beach, which is what you see here, mm -hmm. and to connect that um, with one of the actual bottles. And that serves as a really nice anchor to the show, actually, because as soon as you walk in, if you think back to the installation shot, you have that large blown up image that mm -hmm. sits between the two windows, which is of this, right? Right. Um, and then kind of in front of that, you have um, a, a case um, that has uh, kinetic sand mm -hmm. and it has um, this, this bottle, slightly faded, <laughs> the Tide bottle, I think, um, <laughs> positioned in the sand. Um, and I, I love the conversation that happens between the two, this kind of replica that you, that you see of the form. Um, and I also think that it emphasizes kind of the, the found nature of the objects. Um, but then also, I mean, by extension, you could, you could read many other things in, well, into I like how you've situated it too, because we see the smaller version right in the middle mm -hmm. of the room 
which leads to the back and the larger uh, image. Uh, so you can go back and forth and make a connection. Yeah, and I, I mean, the replication of form is definitely an important aspect of his, his process and thinking because he's working with molded plastic. Um, he's working with forms that, or imagery that we've seen replicated, um, which I think is also an interesting tie to the icon tradition, actually, in that the icon tradition is based on very set rules. Mm -hmm. um, and so Constantine perhaps does not have the same rigid rules mm -hmm. <laughs> that he follows, but he definitely is working within a, a certain vocabulary. And the molded plastic forms that he is finding and, and using in much of his work um, or replicating through um, in different materials uh, is based on sort of a set form mm -hmm. on set. Um, a set plan. How did briefly the collaboration work between uh, yourself and Constantine? Yeah, um, basically I, I went out to meet Constantine, um, for, have that been almost a year? Mm. I think about a year ago. Um, and we did, we just had several visits. Um, so he has a lot of his, his work um, at his home. Um, and he lives in the greater Boston area, and so I had a chance to meet him. I've also had a chance to um, meet uh, his family members um, who've, who've acted at certain points um, to help with translation. Mm -hmm. um, I do not speak Russian, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's, that was very nice. Um, but it's, it was, it, it's been wonderful just because I have had many occasions to sort of sit with Constantine and, and talk with him and, and look through his work. Um, it was great to have um, Nick as, as someone who had worked yeah. with him at an yeah. earlier stage in his career as well, um, and Kent who, um, and his staff who are very familiar with um, their audience um, and with uh, very knowledgeable of, of Russian icons, obviously, which I am a bit less knowledgeable, mm -hmm. much less knowledgeable, I will say. <laughs> um, so it's been a learning experience for me as well. And I would say that, um, you know, Constantine was very, excited about this exhibition, was very pleased to have it at the Museum of Russian Icons, and um, was open and, and collaborative, and it was, it was great. I like how you included at the very end a section um, asking the uh, visitors to give their impressions of the exhibition, does it make sense, uh, how were you experiencing it, and they write a comment or two and then post it on a, a bulletin board that's there as a nice engagement. Yeah, so this is thanks to the, to the education director of the Museum of Russian Icons. Um, they have a, that, that space at the, at the back of the gallery mm. that you're talking about as kind of um, what we at the Fitchburg Art Museum call learning lounges, right? Yeah. Which are areas of, of kind of engagement and um, sometimes that can mean like a space where you can touch objects or you can learn about process or you can reflect on what you've seen. Um, and I think that that is, it, it is amazing to have that space because I think that um, exhibitions bring up various, right. th are cause for reflection, right? And, and sometimes it is great to be able to, to share that and leave your comment behind yeah. so other people can pick people can pick it up as a point to start. Unfortunately, we have to uh, wrap up right now. It's been fascinating to learn more about the exhibition, about Constantine. Definitely encourage people to make their way out to the Museum of Russian Icons up until the end of June. So yep. lots of time to get out there. Lots of time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jay. It was a real pleasure. Also want to thank those of you watching for joining us and hope you'll be able to tune in next time. <laughs>